Okay, I'm coming to you today from my garage on my 2022 uh, Suron X Black Edition. And I've got my little uh, Nicaraguan boa today. He's getting some, some me time. He crawls up on me and goes into my hat and then just kind of looks around as I walk around. Um, you got to spend time with your reptiles and that makes them uh, friendly. But so, uh, yep, you'll see him in the video. Maybe I'll put him on the bike. He's about two feet long. Uh, but today I'm going to get into, because uh, I don't see a lot of information online, I could get a lot more uh, specifically into this. It's going to be tuning the suspension, but today it's going to be more about um, how, to do it, how to do it. And this is dealing with the fast ace rear shock and the fast ace front sh uh, shock um, or uh, suspension components. Um, so I'm just going to touch base with people because maybe there's some i have a, an extensive motocross background um, all the way back from the 80s all the way up to the two, uh, 2000s and uh, maybe i can share a little bit of my knowledge uh, but so here we're going to look at some of the things that you can do to, uh, factory to uh, kind of firm up your ride or make it ride a little bit better all right here we go okay first off we got here um, this is, uh, there's no instructions, uh, unfortunately, that come with the motorcycle or none that I could see um, on how to maybe basically set up your suspension or um, labeling different parts of the suspension. I could be wrong in the manual. Uh, maybe I didn't look good enough, but this is most likely your compression setting here and you've got a plus and a minus and it shows you uh, arrow wise. Um, on a lot of, you know, motocross forks, that would be a bleed screw so you can uh, kind of uh, bleed when it gets warmer or um, just as it builds up pressure you can you can uh, if it's depending on what kind of shock absorber it is you can usually take off a bleed screw and it'll release a little bit of air um, but I don't know uh, about that and there's one right over here on the other side but that's li highly likely due to uh, how uh, this uh, suspension is put together so I to the best of my knowledge, I would not uh, mess with either one of those uh, look like screws that you can take out. Uh, but here is your Phillips head adjuster, and so you can go minus plus. What this is going to do is this is just going to slow your suspension down through the stroke. So in a way, in a very loose way, you can kind of firm it up by you know moving it towards the plus or going all the way in this direction going to slow the suspension down but if you slow it down too much then you will make your suspension too harsh because when you hit a big bump it can't travel up fast enough to absorb that bump so you just need to go you know turn it up a little bit or turn it all the way up and then go ride it and come back uh, and you'll be riding on the terrain that, that you're trying to tune this for so if you're riding on the street and you just kind of really want to firm it up it's going to be different than if you're riding on a uh, you know dirt with unlevel surface so just keep that in mind but you got your plus and your minus okay hope that makes sense clear enough simple enough okay then down here all right then down here we've got um, your rebound setting right here and uh, rebound controls how fast the shock expands back out compression con controls the front wheel coming up into the shock absorber and rebound controls as it's going back down so you never want to have the bike too bouncy where it just totally freely just bounces you know because uh, then it's not being a good shock absorber um, so rebound um, you want to set so when you press down on it it doesn't snap back snap back at you but you don't want it to be we're so slow that it slowly rises um, I don't know if you can go that extreme on the setting, but this will be your rebound and this will be with a uh, screwdriver. And just to tell you either the, you know, the compression up top or the rebound, um, you want to back that out all the way um, and, that, and you don't ever want to force it past much, uh, if it starts to get tight and you don't want to, because you can damage it but um, you want to back all the way off and then then you have your full setting all the way you typically to your right as you turn clockwise um, and that's how you control rebound and uh, yeah so 
Um, it would just be through trial and error, and um, you want to go out. I mean, you can put put your weight on the front suspension and really compress it down and see how fast things move. And I typically just like to slow stuff up so it's more fluid, not slow, but just more fluid. Because um, what you're wanting to do is you're wanting to keep your, your wheel on the ground as it's going over rough terrain. You want your wheel to follow the terrain, okay? Hopefully that makes sense too. Okay, as far as the rear suspension goes, we have three different settings. We have our blue setting right here, which um, I haven't really played around with mine. Uh, it sh should be the compression, uh, compression setting, how fast, remember again, the shock compresses and the rebound is the red knob right here and that's how, back, how fast it expands back up to, to hold the bike up. Compression, rebound. Um, and then you, would, you can play around with those settings depending on your weight and what terrain you're riding on. But here's one thing that gets some people that they're, if they're not really knowledgeable and have this experience, it's the spring preload. Okay, and, and then how you will adjust the spring preload. If you weigh 250 pounds and you sit on the bike, it's gonna compress a lot because it comes from the factory all the way up so the spring tension is not increased. It's, it's pretty much uh, just the basic spring almost in its shape. So you will wanna compress that spring more so that it sits more in its stroke and it doesn't sag as much. So there's a compression, uh, compression ring, collar ring here, what they call that and it has little notches in it. Um, and then so you wanna have some kind of tool, you can have a large screwdriver, but I don't like to use metal, uh, a metal on metal, usually makes it move uh, a little faster and you get a little bit more movement out of it, but I like to use wood. Uh, this is just a wood dowel that I have. I have just different wood pieces. Um, and so when you use wood, this is not going to mar up anything or scratch anything, but uh, righty tidy, lefty loosey, um, just like a bolt. Uh, so you'll come in and hopefully you can see all this on, on my screen here. Um, you'll just tap that with a hammer and just, just FYI, I mean, you're gonna have to do that a lot to compress that spring down. Uh, uh, quite a bit so just be you know you just be aware that you're gonna have to tap and spin that because it, it happens a little bit at a time and then once you go too far you don't want to hit your your reservoir tank right here your overflow or your, your it holds more of your fluid um, you want to come back and get on another an, another one of those edges and just spin that all the way around until when you sit on the bike, you, you wanna have some sag. You never wanna sit on a bike and it not sag at all. Sag allows the suspension, because when you're going over unlevel terrain, if your bike was so, um, so stiff that it didn't compress when you sat on it, when you went over the unlevel ground, your wheel would not fall to the ground. It would typically skip over. So being in control, having the wheels and you know power to the ground and, and your steering, everything to be more in control, you want your tires to follow the terrain. So when you sit on it, you, and realistically, because it's not a motocross bike, I think it's about three inches of sag, typically for a motocross bike with you know quite a bit better suspension. But maybe on this bike, an inch to an inch and a half of sag when you sit on it um, will allow um, your suspension to droop down into the low spots on the ground. Um, and so what you're doing here is you're just setting, so if you weigh 250 pounds and you sit on this and it sags down, the seat's now right here, then you need to stiffen up this spring. And so how you're gonna do that is you're gonna go, you're gonna go clockwise on this retainer collar so that's what you're going to do is you're going to tighten up and compress the spring. But other than that, you've got your rebound and your compression and um, compression again, slow as it, it's going to slow it down as it compresses or it's going to speed it up so that it goes fast or it goes slow. And then the rebound is going to judge the speed of how it returns to its original size. But other than that, hopefully that helps someone. Hopefully I, ex I explained it well enough. Uh, my snakes kind of trying to get off my head um, and uh, he's kind of distracting me. But 
that's basically your suspension tuning. I mean, before you go looking for a bigger uh, spring, because when actually when you put a much bigger uh, spring or uh, it's, it'll be a, a thicker, it'll be a harder to compress spring uh, than the factory one. Typically, if you do it right, you have to revalve the shock because um, the shock should be valved for this, this spring tension. Um, so if you go to a much heavier spring, then you could throw things out of whack. Um, uh, it's just, that's just general, uh, general education and motocross suspension. But uh, other than that, I hope uh, that helps somebody out, kind of tune, you know, within a small degree, uh, your suspension on the 2022 Suron X Black Edition with the Fast Ace rear shock and the forks. All right, as I, as I mentioned, hopefully, I don't know where my camera view is, but um, here is my snake. He climbed into my hat and I fed him a mouse the other day, so he's kind of bloated. Um, let me uh, pull, he's now coming out of my hat and he's wrapped around my ear. This is a Nicaraguan boa from Central America, from Nicaragua. And uh, he's a young, uh, young boa. Uh, he is about six months old, and uh, he's also considered a dwarf boa. They, they're not going to get as large as, uh, let's say, a true red tail boa that can get up to, you know, seven and a half feet. This guy will get up to about four and a half, maybe five, at a large, large Nicaraguan uh, boa. Um, so there he is. Pretty cool snake, real gentle. But other than that, um, that's enough about the video. Thanks for tuning in. Tuning in. Hopefully this helps somebody to, uh, he's got my thumb really tight right there. Hopefully someone finds this informative, can uh, take what information I've given them here and maybe they can tweak their suspension to get it a little bit stiffer if they need it stiffer or if they're really lightweight, they can uh, free up some of the, uh, make it softer for them. Um, but other than that, thanks for viewing. Have a great day and bye-bye.